I was a small child, it seemed as if the sea would always provide for us, for our family. We would walk onto a reef at low tide and pick the mussels from Farrier Reno, uh, where we lived in the west coast of New Zealand. And last year, I returned to those same spots, which had such a bounty of, of sea creatures living in them. And I dived there, and there was nothing left. It was so sad, you know, to, to be back in this magical place, in this place which you know, holds such a special place in my heart as a child, and to realise the way that we, as humans, have abused it. Nowadays, food's become so easy for us to get. We just go to the supermarket, make our choices from promotions on the shelves. We don't really have any concept of um, how that food got there. Dad was a dairy farmer in this area. Like Dad said, you're never coming back on the farm. I, I went to uni in Melbourne and you know, I was never going to be a student. I was always looking out the wind. As a student, I was a poor one. And I came home in the Christmas holidays from uni and this little local scallop industry was coming back after having several years of um, downturn. And I suggested to my dad, um, how about we have a crack at that? So we got this little old wooden boat and I became a fisherman. It was soon to be realised that um, people didn't like skull fishing in Port Phillip Bay and it was a real battle to stay there. To keep my crew working in the off season, we started mussel farming. We just had a crack at it. It was sort of more of a hobby than a business. The skull industry did fail. So now I only had one industry and that was the muscle industry. So now I had to make it work on two fronts, not only it itself as a business, but also now to sustain my family. How I came to meet Lance, I was just feeling fed up with muscles that we were getting and I couldn't understand why one day they'd be great and the rest of the days they wouldn't, wouldn't be great. I'd organised to go to the Sea Bounty Farm with my friend Jason. And I just didn't feel like it. You know, I felt like giving it up after being a cook for so many years. I went down to the wharf in Port Arlington with Jason and um, we had the most incredible day. And that day was so inspiring. I went back and I made the changes in my life that I needed to. I guess, you know, looking back on it now, I didn't realise it would be you know, one of the last days with my friend as well. A little farmer like me, I'm growing about 20,000 ropes at the moment. Each one of those ropes contains about 1,700 mussels on it. A few years back, I was like the marketing man in our industry. Like, we were selling other people's mussels as well as our own. I didn't come out to see much anymore. And a couple of times I was thinking, I want to sell out. Maybe I'll do something else, you know, like when things got hard. So we were downsized, and then I came out on the boat. And the moment I came back on the bus, I'm going, man, I could have sold out of this. This is where I want to be. If, if I was out of this industry and wanted to do something, I'd want to be here. So Shane following the one, and the industry and the business keeps going. I know I'll always be able to go out, hop on a boat, do a day's work, and that's, that's how I'd like to finish my days. I don't want to retire. There's a thought that how can you truly appreciate nature if you don't know of its pleasures? You know, and, that, and the same goes for the person who loves food. How can you truly love food if you know nothing of nature? And you can see the expression on Lance's face when he opens the muscle and that muscle is plump and it's juicy and it's full of brine and it's perfect. We all understand that we have to make a living from what we do, but he's putting the quality of the muscles ahead of profit. And that's something that resonates with me.